Hi everyone, long time no see. I know I have taken a bit of a unofficial break from YouTube. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you may not know that I have taken a new step into the career path of a stylist and I have been really enjoying it. I enjoy making people feel good in their bodies. And for me, that is so powerful. And I do wanna kind of bring that content over to my YouTube channel. Today's video is a bit of an intersect of those two kind of passions because I'm gonna be talking about the not so new blushes from Lisa Eldridge, the ones she brought out with her latest release. I have all six of them because I love cream blushes and I'm a sucker for cream blushes. And honestly, I have not bought very much makeup this year, but when Lisa Eldridge releases something, I'm a sucker for it and I love her makeup. So I wanted to try these out. So this is not really a review of the actual makeup. This is more of a practical guide on how to wear these with what colors, with what lip colors, with what outfit. So you get inspiration or some idea on how to wear these colors if you're like, ooh, I love this mountain walk kind of purplish color, but I don't know how to wear it. So if that's you, then let's watch. It's not a full on in-depth review. I will tell you, I do like these cream blushes. They're not my favorite cream blushes because I wish they were slightly more glowy and lit from within type of blushes, like the Kea Weiss ones, which are my holy grail blushes. But these are definitely more natural. They are easy to use, which I like. I think the color selection is definitely pink leaning and I would love to see this range expand in future. But I do note that she did release the highlighters, which I think that if you do want the glow for these, that layering these together work nicely. I definitely understand why she wanted to keep these on the more natural matte side because she is a makeup artist and she does a lot of editorial work. So I feel like this would work pretty well because they don't have any light reflectiveness in them. So that's my high level review of these blushes because this is not what this video is about because there's many of those videos out there, but I'm gonna show you how I would wear these practically. If you wanna see more makeup and styling content, I'd love it if you would subscribe. Without further ado, let's get into it. So I'm gonna quickly show you how I use this Elevated Glow and I have the shade Crystal Nebula. And by the way, if you're interested in any of the products I'm using, I'm going to list them in the description below. My main concern is that my skin is quite dull and it's lost that kind of glow from within, the luminosity that I had in my youth, in my 20s, which I wanna bring back with products like these, which I never used to use until I started using the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter and I fell in love with that product and ever since then, yeah, I knew that I liked that kind of glowy product that wasn't glittery, which this is completely. I just like to put it in this area under my eye, kind of cheekbone area, quite liberally. Like I don't think Lisa Eldred uses this much at once. And then I like to take, without even blending it, my concealer and put that on top. You know, it's probably not the suggested way, but this works for me and I like the result. And I just take a brush and blend it all in. Back in Melbourne, we're wearing masks again. I don't use really foundation anymore. I only put makeup on my eyes and do my eyebrows and that's it. But for the purpose of this video, I will be doing a full face. Okay, so now my base is done and I'm gonna go in with Pink Soap, which I think is the most popular shade in her range. I feel like it's quite a neutral color as well, so I feel like it goes quite well when you're wearing colors that are maybe louder and you don't want the makeup to overwhelm the look. So, you know, a little does go a long way, honestly. So just be mindful of that. And she does recommend using fingers. And I think this product, what I do like about it is it's very effortless. I feel like this is pretty hard to go wrong. And I would say that this shade is definitely best for people with light to medium skin because I don't feel like this would show up very well on very deep skin because it is quite light. For this eye makeup, I would do something really simple. I would probably just go with like matte browns. So I'm gonna use a couple of matte browns that I have. Yeah, keep it quite simple. A bit of a light brown in the crease. I will define my lash line as well. You know, I am wearing white jeans and I just got that all over my white jeans. Tip is don't wear white when you're filming a makeup tutorial. And I'm gonna define my lower lashes as well, which is what I always do really. Now, that is a very simple eye look, but that's kind of what I am into these days. I will add a little bit of pink soap on the lid as well. There is something very satisfying about having like that eye color, the same color as your cheek color. Although just beware that I don't think these are approved to be used on the eyes, so obviously use at your own 
risk. Because the look is so light, naturally you might think, okay, fawn, which I think is a beautiful color, but I do think that it would be too light and it might kind of have an effect where it just washes me out with the lighter makeup. So I would actually go something deep and I would go Velvet Affair. So that's what I'm gonna do. I feel like now that I see this look, I feel like I wanna add more of that blush on. Again, that pairing is Velvet Affair with Pink Soap. So realistically, I would wear that look with this type of outfit. I would go for something a bit more neutral on the face and so I can actually wear some color because I don't feel like it's clashing and I feel like these tones are in sync. This is another outfit that I would pair this makeup with. Going monochromatic is quite satisfying aesthetically. This shade of, of pink is very kind of this type of pink where it's soft, muted, and quite neutral. I think that this goes really well. You know, conversely, you could do a brighter color like this, but if you do notice, this is also a muted blue. So I feel like this muted pink goes really well with your muted, more statement colors. Next, I'm gonna show you Dante's Dream. This is kind of like a terracotta -y brownie pink. As you put it on, you're like, <gasps> That's so dark, but it does sheer out. If you have gone way too overboard, which sometimes I do with blush, you're just like, whoa. Take your foundation brush and just blend it in so that it doesn't look crazy, which is why I do like to use a mix of my fingers and a brush, because I feel like you get the best results that way. I love this shade. I feel like this shade is definitely my preferred shade over pink soap because I feel like this color suits my skin tone better. Okay, what am I gonna do with the eyes? I wanna actually make this eye look a bit warmer because I feel like this color is slightly warmer. And so I'm gonna add some of those warm brown tones onto my eyes. And you might think, oh, this still looks really boring. And then I'm also gonna add liner. I love this eyeliner from Eccentric Cosmetics and it's in this really nice mid-tone brown, which I like. Again, super simple, but I feel like these colors just work really well. These kind of a little bit richer, warmer browns. Now with lipstick, I would actually go Velvet Decade, but I'd use it like a lip stain type of thing where I would just add a little bit on the lips like that. So it's not too harsh. You know, I would do that. I'd totally do that. So that is Velvet Decade with Dante's Dream. I just think they go really well together. So with these kind of deeper chocolatey tones, I would do browns. I do like deeper tones with these kind of richer hues and because brown is such a, a color that has been trending for a while now, I do think that it looks quite modern like this. I think also with a cream on top, you could also do those kind of creamier tones as well to create some contrast. Okay, next I'm going to use Island Glow, which is a coral that I feel does lean a bit more pink than orange than I expected. So you can sort of see it is quite a pink coral. It's a very summery color and kind of what I think of when I think of seasonal colors, but I would wear it whenever. You know, I don't subscribe personally to different colors for different seasons. I definitely would be inclined to add this color on the eyelid as well, just because it's so vibrant, which I have done actually before for this particular shade. And I would also put some on the nose as well. So I look like I've gotten some sun. I wanna add some shimmer on the eyelid as well with this color. So I still have that coral color on my lid, but I'm just layering this on top. I am going to go in with Atomic Cherry, which is one of her new shades. Cause I feel like this matches in um, kind of tone. I mean, that could be too matchy matchy for you, but I would do that. And for the outfit, I definitely wouldn't be wearing something like this. I think this clashes with this makeup. So let's change. So that is Island Glow with Atomic Cherry. I would definitely go for bright white. I feel like bright white looks so summery, so beachy, and that is what I think about when I think of these colors. I think corals go really well with fresh, bright, clear colors, like a bright, crisp white, compared to like a muted color. So if you didn't want to do white, you could do like a bright pink bright orange. Let's move on to the next color. Moving on to Venetian Red. Now this shade is actually my favorite because it looks to me like a very, like you know when you've done exercise and your face flushes red, it's kind of like that red. And I actually really enjoy it on the eyelids as well. So that's what I really do with this color. It's like chuck it on the cheeks and add it to the eyes. So that's what I'm gonna do. 
Again, it looks scarily opaque and like a crazy color, but it really shears out really nicely, you know, and again, I like this on the nose as well. I'm gonna add some on the eyelids as well. With a bit of that leftover makeup on the eyes, I just lined my lash line again. I'm also actually gonna add a bit of Celestial Fire, which I did buy. I thought it'd be like a nice glowy bronzer and add that on the cheeks as well. Ooh, that was a lot. <laughs> I'm gonna migrate a bit of that into the other side. Blend that in. Wow, I think I'm gonna have to bring out the foundation brush again. But yeah, I feel like I look like I've had a bit of a tan. What do you think? <laughs> like I've had some sun. I just feel like this is the healthiest color. I love it. Definitely my favorite out of all of them and did not expect this to be my favorite. I thought my favorite was gonna be Dante's Dream and I feel like this is quite unique in my collection of cream brushes. Like for me, that's a holy grail blush if it looks like it's in synergy with my skin and that color could naturally occur on my skin if you know what I'm saying. Now in terms of what color I'd wear on the lips, I'd wear like a My Lips But Better color. This one is Kitten Mischief and this one is, it gives my lips some pigment and it's a little on the pink side. So you know what, now that I put that on, I'm not actually sure about that. I'm gonna take that off. Now I'm gonna add Spirited Away, which has been described as for people with kind of light skin tones is a my lips a better color and it is a really actually nice shade so this is spirited away with venetian red so i do think that these two colors work really well together venetian red with spirited away so this is how i wear this makeup i would wear it with my house dress if we weren't in lockdown and i was going out with the kids or something like that i'd put on a dress like this and wear this kind of simple makeup because it's just easy quick and i look somewhat put together i feel like it could go with pretty much any outfit that I put on. It isn't too loud. I don't think it takes away from any outfit. I just think it, it makes me look somewhat uh, put together. I don't look as tired, done out the door. Now we're gonna move on to what I think are the most challenging colors for my coloring because I am warm toned and these are very cool toned. I have not worn these very much. This is gonna be a little bit of an experiment of how I'm gonna pair these today to make them work. I'm going to go for what I think would be slightly easier. This is Mountain Walk. I don't think I've actually used this, so I'm gonna to have to shake it. Because the first time you do use this, there is gonna be a bit of oil coming out because it might have separated in transit. So this is the shade. It is kind of like a fuchsia. I feel like this would work really beautifully on like olive tones or cool toned skins once it goes on the skin it doesn't look as scary i think once you blend it in it doesn't look near as scary as in the tube you can sort of immediately tell that this color isn't 100 percent perfect for my skin so when this happens when i wear colors that aren't the best for my skin i counterbalance that with colors that work really well some warm tones like orange and things like that so that's what i'm gonna do gonna go and do an orange in the crease to balance out the coolness of the blush and I'm also gonna smoke it out with a deeper brown bit of a smoky eye gonna add a bit of brown to the lower lash line as well and probably some of that orange I feel like that has definitely balanced out the cheeks as strange as it sounds to wear colors that are opposite in tone I somehow find that that tends to work better than putting too many cool tones for me because I just feel again that it can just make me look sick. So for me, it's just about how can I wear it in a way that still flatters me. So with this look, I'm gonna do Skyscraper Rose on the lips, which is one of my favorite lipsticks, which is such a bright, beautiful color. My goodness, love this color. It brings me so much joy when I see this color on my lips. In my opinion, this is Lisa Eldridge's hero color. I just love it. I might actually add, go back in with a little bit of Mountain Walk. Just a little bit more. I feel like they do work really quite well together actually. So that is Skyscraper Rose with Mountain Walk. Now in terms of what colors I'd wear with this lip and this bright, bold kind of cheek color is I would wear something equally bold. Also, if you didn't want to do like a print, you could wear a block color, but I would definitely go clear and bright with these hues. I wouldn't do a muted uh, outfit. Similarly, if you wanted the lip to really stand out because this lip does, I would also potentially go black as well. So I'll show you the two side by side. Can you see the black really does contrast very much with the lip? And I think sometimes because black can sometimes look draining. You do need that pop of color 
to bring your face forward so it doesn't you just don't look washed out so yeah, I surprisingly actually love this combination I did not expect to find one that I really loved and then we are going to move on to the lucky last one which is pink poetry and I tell you I'm a little bit unsure of how I'm gonna wear this with what color but let's just see how we go this color is not my kind of color for sure so I haven't worn it out of all these colors this is definitely the trickiest one for me to wear because again I am warm toned and I'm just trying to push it out because uh, it seems to be stuck it is very pink and if you like very pink blushes you're gonna love this one but for me it clashes with my skin so I'm kind of again thinking how do I wear colors that aren't my best what eyeshadow what lip color I could again go that whole orange on the eyes better colors on there I'll just put a little bit of bronzer like on my eyes give it a little bit of color without looking like too much too much of a clash again I might do a bit of a brown liner look so with just an eyeshadow just like a really soft liner look and I know none of these eyeshadow looks like groundbreaking or anything like that but it's kind of like my realistic everyday eyeshadow look because going into the office I don't like to draw too much attention to my eyes I want people to be focusing on what I'm saying not necessarily like on my amazing eyeshadow you know I'm thinking with this eye look I would do a velvet blush with this you know a slightly deeper tone I feel like these go because they are both cool toned and because my lips are feeling dry I would also add some lip gloss in the same shade this is the velvet blush lip gloss I totally do that this lip color is definitely better than the cheek color velvet blush is not a color that I reach for all too frequently because again I feel like although I can make it work I don't feel like the color is the best for me so in terms of what I wear I would wear actually gray I do feel like gray and pink work really well together and I did discover that through actually playing with pink and gray makeup one of the few ways that I do think this type of pink does work with so yeah that was the final pairing I don't think that this was my favorite at all but I would like to know your thoughts which ones do you think worked really well which ones were your least favorite I think it's clear from these examples that some colors definitely work better for me than others and because everyone is different you know some colors that look terrible on me are gonna look great on you yeah and I'd be totally curious to know how you pair each of these blushes with what lipstick and it doesn't have to necessarily be a specific brand of lipstick what colors do you like to pair together color theory is really interesting and how two colors can work off each other can really sometimes surprise you because they can work so harmoniously when you find the right two colors together yes yeah, so i hope you guys enjoyed this one and i'm off to lunch because i'm starving i'll see you in the next one bye